Hey hey, Marcus House with you here and we're talking about the SpaceX Interplanetary Transport System today. What I want to do is see if I can get this thing into orbit using the Realism Overhaul and Real Solar System mods. So what I've done is tried to build something that closely matches the height and the weight and the tank diameters, but at the same time I'm not trying to make it look like the real thing. What I've done is configured my own engines that actually very closely relate to the sea level nozzle and the vacuum nozzle with the same ISPs and the same thrusts. Essentially all I've done is grabbed an old Laztec mod Merlin engine and just switched out all the configurations so that they become Raptor cluster engines and the Raptor vacuum engines. I've got the booster configuration set up the same with 21 engines on the outer ring, 14 on the inner ring and 7 on the centre. Now I've got only those central 7 engines gibbling which was by design and I'm not sure what the gimbal rate should be actually, I couldn't find that stat. I've got them gimbling up to 4%. All these engines are stacked on some thrust plates which are sort of stacked on top of each other in an interesting way. I've used the tweak scale mods to scale up a few parts such as these landing legs which are obviously much bigger than normal. Now I've created a booster at the same height with the same propellant mass of 6,700 tonnes and I've even got the dry mass quite close at uh, around 250 tonnes. Looking at the actual tank there you can see that we've got a wet mass of 6.745 kilotons which is close enough. And as I scroll the 77 metres up this massive booster we can see that we've got these three large air brakes set up and we've also fixed these with tweak scale. Added in some large RCS thrusters using tweak scale and just gave them their own propellant. In the real design the fuel for these are supposed to be liquid methane and oxygen. In this case though I needed some extra mass just to simulate some cargo weight. Underneath the interstage fairing here we've got our cluster of engines for the second stage. We've got our six vacuum engines on the outside there which are not set to gimbal and the three smaller sea level engines which are set to gimbal. I would assume the vacuum engines are for getting us up into orbit whereas the sea level engines are probably for landing on Mars. Popping the fairing back on there, we've also added a large battery just to simulate some more cargo weight. And I've tried to mirror the ship's stats here including the propellant, the dry mass and the cargo. The most significant of that of course is the propellant mass which is 1.95 kiloton. So the lower half of our second stage here is reading 1.948 kilotons which is very close. And the top component of this is largely empty space with just a little bit more mass to simulate cargo. I imagine the real vessel will probably be a few hundred ton more than this, but this is good as a rough simulation for the moment. So we'll launch this. Now the footage here is sped up to 150% and this is just because it would be a little boring to watch in real time with realism overhaul installed. So I don't know how many of you watched the presentation by Elon Musk on the interplanetary transport system the other day. Some of the ideas in the plan are just incredible and even if half of those things make it into the final production vehicle it would just be amazing. So with the real solar system and realism overhaul mods installed we're basically here simulating a real earth with real orbital speeds required to get into orbit. So orbital speed is just shy of 8,000 meters per second, so it takes a huge amount of power to get up to that velocity. That's where the Raptor engines come in, and if you saw the engine test that was conducted for the first time the other day, you probably also would have noticed that the stats on the engine are just incredible. Elon tweeted the other day that the chamber pressure is almost three times the Merlin engine, which makes it of course several times more powerful than the Merlin engine. So there was a few question marks in my mind about the whole thing the other day, one of which was the ability for the booster to land straight back in the launch mount. Now I certainly think this is probably possible given that the Raptor engines can throttle right down to 20%, but the question would be is it going to be a practical thing to do? Would it be better to just have a less expensive landing site and a second booster which is going to take the tanker up? I figure that eventually they're going to need multiple boosters anyway. And it seems just a little risky to land the whole thing in the launch mount just in case something happens and something blows up. Regardless if that was to come true it would just be absolutely amazing. The other thing that was a question mark in my mind was how they were going to do the refueling. Now to date I don't believe we've ever done any sort of refueling experiments to that level and I don't know how liquids would behave when you're trying to move them from one vessel to another in zero gravity. Engine cutoff there at 2,300 meters per second and less than 10% fuel remaining which is by design. 
the transport ship there firing all of its engines at the moment, including the sea level ones. Now, I don't know if the sea level engines will actually ever be used in this stage, but I was just using them right here just because I needed the gimbal to make sure that my trajectory was solid. And I've cut them off there, so now we're just using the vacuum engines. I don't believe they touched on that the other day in the presentation. I may have missed it. I suspect the vacuum engines will be the only engines that would be used to get to a low Earth orbit. For now, just a minimal amount of RCS thrust can keep us pointed in the right direction. Switching back to our booster now, which has already started doing its turn to point retrograde so that we can do our boost back burn. In the spec sheet for the booster, it did specify that the final velocity was 8,650 kilometers an hour. That's around 2,400 meters per second, so this is pretty close to what we're at now. Boosting back now with our center cluster of seven engines and our inner ring of 14 engines, and this is exactly the same as what was shown in the presentation video. Now I'm using Mech Jeb's landing guidance system here to show the landing prediction. So all we need to do here is wait until the blue cursor is just over the land and then we'll cut our engines. I can tell you I've got absolutely no chance of landing it back on the launch pad so bugger that. It's pretty amazing when you think about it that less than 10% of the remaining fuel will actually thrust us back the opposite direction over 3000 meters per second. So that's about far enough, we're throttled down to 20% now, and we'll cut it off there. Again, we'll use our RCS to turn this thing back retrograde so that we can start doing our landing burn. In the meantime, back to our second stage. Getting close to orbital speed there now at almost 5,000 meters per second. Only a few thousand meters per second left to go, and of course, as our thruster weight gets higher and higher, we gain more velocity per second, so we're almost there. Coming down there now, not quite pointing retrograde. Air brakes out there. Now, I did actually try to use proper grid fins, but the grid fins were just misbehaving so badly and actually making the whole thing terribly unstable, so I didn't actually end up using them. I just popped the air brakes on, which worked quite well. Now the real vessel I'm assuming would probably do a small deceleration burn here. I didn't need to, I wasn't having any re-entry heat issues. Plus I'm going to be much less efficient in my actual landing anyway, so I need more fuel for that. Meanwhile our second stage is well over 6,000 meters per second now, not far to go. The fuel situation there is looking quite good, it should easily get to orbital velocity, and I don't know how much fuel would be left in the real situation here anyway. Back to our booster now, just doing our final descent burn just using our center cluster of seven engines with the gimbal on. Now at 20% throttle, we still descend slowly, so that does give a good indication that they're gonna have much better control with this. And touching down there, and wobbling around all over the place for some strange reason. Back up to our transport ship, and we're just completing our orbital insertion burn there now. There we go. Obviously the booster now would relaunch again with the tanker so that we can fully refuel our transport ship and then off to Mars. So this was a good proof of concept mission before we actually go further with this. Everything seems to check out so far based on the tech specs of the presentation so I'm happy with that. I'd love to know what people think of that mission and of course there's probably plenty of oversights that I've got there on my part. Hopefully I don't have too much wrong there, but if you have any questions or comments for me, whack them down in the comments below. For those that want to tell me that the rocket design looks a little phallic, uh, yes, I already agree with that. Wasn't overly intentional, but I digress. Thanks very much to all my wonderful subscribers, and if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Refueling complete there, and we'll get all our cables back out to touch down on the surface. Just like with Pole, the experience that we're going to pick up here around Val is identical, so we're going to get 20 points for planting these flags. Again, planting the flags is only worth 1.6 extra experience per Kerbal, but we'll do it anyway. There we go, all flags planted. That's beautiful. So this was our last mission for this leg of the journey. We're